Hi guys, it's Chuck here again. We're working on my 1977 Jeep Cherokee Chief. Uh, we'll take a look at the inside now because I know the lighting was pretty crappy on the last one and you can see my breath. Yeah, we're, far, we're, uh, we're heated by a wood stove here, so I had to put the jacket on. Uh, so let's go take a look around back and uh, I'll show you the inside. Just bear with me so I don't get shaky here. All right. There's a Mickey Thompson's Baja, Mickey Thompson Baja clause there for your review. And we'll take a look at the inside. Again, this was an Arizona truck. And what you're seeing is a lot of dirt. Uh, not a lot of rust, but a lot of dirt because it's been uh, pretty filthy work so far. I'll take a look under the rubber mat I laid down here. Again, it's not too shabby. Again, man, that's heavy. Wow! She's pretty clean on the inside. I'm pretty happy with the, with the money invested so far. We'll take a look in here closer. Let me zoom. Little bit of surface rust on the inside there. We'll take care of that with a little angle grinder action. Take a look at the other side. And there you go. Not too happy with the placement of the fuel line though. We're going to have some, some troubles with that because she already leaks like a sieve when I go to fill it up. Now in the front, I've got, a, I've got the stock Jeep seat which I really didn't like too much. It's really soft and really, it's like a lazy boy chair that you sort of sink into and you don't really get a lot of firmness out of it. But over there on the passenger side, what I put in just temporarily now, just for review purposes, is a uh, 2006 Ford Escape powered seat. Let me get a light here so I can show you a little better. We'll go back out. Just again, she's still pretty clean on the inside. There was no surface rust to speak of. Just a little dirt. Now, here's one of the problems that I've already been tipped off to by the guys over at IFSJA. And that's the problem. The seats are great. They sit properly. And the, the brackets are such that it, uh, she's, she's good to go in terms of height. Now, here's the problem. If you're considering swapping out into a, another pair of seats from another, another model, another make of vehicle. Let me get in close here so you, you can see. See, in the back, I'm not too worried about being able to weld in some studs there for the back of the seats to, to mount up to. But in the front, we got a wee problem here. See, because the, the transmission hump right in the center there does, it doesn't want to help the cause any at all. And I'm going to have to uh, cut that bracket down and maybe splice something in there. Otherwise, I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to uh, cut out a slot of that uh, transmission hump. And uh, I really don't want to do that. Although other guys have done it with some, with some success and it looks pretty good. Uh, again, you see there's probably about, let me give you an example just how high off that is. That's about the spread of my hands a little further. That's like about four inches or so. Four inches from, from the bottom to the top of that bracket. And she's still not really seated level. So that's going to be next once I get the rest of the suspension put back together. Obviously, I got some work to do in the dash. The previous owner got a little adventurous with trying to get that burled wood grain uh, cluster in there and tried to add some aftermarket gauges to varying degrees of success. So I hate electrical work myself. It's a real nightmare. And if I could hire somebody else to do it, I would. But I'm, uh, I'm what you call intrinsically uh, cheap and frugal. But we'll get her done. Hopefully, we'll send her out for inspection the next month. And with any luck, she'll pass. So if anybody wants these uh, wants these maroon original seats, let me know because I'm going to ditch these. They, they're real comfy as an armchair, not so much to drive in. And we'll take another look around here. Let me get on the inside. Bear with me here. As you can see, the floor, hopefully you can see, the floor is in real good shape. We'll zoom in. That's just leaves and debris that, that followed me in here. And I laid down a rubber mat that I picked up at Canadian Tire. That's the stuff you use uh, to put on your porch in the wintertime up here in the north. So that uh, you lay it on the porch, you cut up in strips, and you put it on your stairs. So people don't slip off your stairs and you don't end up with a lawsuit on your hand. And that was put in there basically not so much for sound and deadening properties. But basically so my tools won't float around and my dog won't get shot out the back. Speaking of which... One of the first problems I encountered, as many uh, full-size Jeep owners may have, is uh, the window wouldn't go down. Now, I didn't know if it was the switch. I didn't know if it was the, uh, if it was the actual motor. I don't know if there was a, a strip in the wiring that wouldn't let it work. 
Found out the, a little too late though that the motor did work and there was no problem with that. All I had to do was hook up my my battery charger up to the positive and negative terminals here on, on these wires and, and reverse the polarity to get it go up and down. So I know my motor was fine, so the switch is probably bad or there's a break in the wiring somewhere along the line. So before you go uh, sticking your hands inside here, because it's a really tight squeeze to get, a, to get one of your paws up inside here, uh, before you go screwing around the inside, uh, maybe check the wires, hook it up to your battery charger or spare battery that you might have and see if it's not the motor. And uh, I should have done that first, but sometimes I'm a knucklehead and I learn things the hard way. All right, uh, what else we got to look at? Let's go around to the front. And let me aim the light here. I'm no Martin Scorsese, folks. This is a budget operation. And we'll take it like that. There we go. Another Baja claw waiting to get mounted. And there we go again. Again, just surface debris right here on the floor. <sighs> That, that's all just a bunch of nothing right here. It's all debris and crap and little spare wrenches I've been looking for for some time now. Again, there's a fair bit of butchery here in terms of the wiring harness. And again, like I mentioned, I really hate electrical work real bad. It comes with its own complex set of problems. Uh, otherwise, just some minor surface rust over here along the door jam. That'll grind right out, no problems. I don't have any worries there. And... Uh, Floors are real good, and we'll take one less. The headliner could use a little tender loving care, I'll tell you. She's split up there, but that'll be the next project to show you about because what we're putting in there is a uh, highway patrol uh, police surveillance system. So that should mount up just about over that hole. So I'll be able to, I'll be able to videotape my my, my uh, trail rides and uh, share them with you guys here on YouTube. And that's about it. Eh, close encounters. And we'll take a walk around to the front now. Probably going to run out of battery life here. Again, just surface rust on top of that, on top of that primer. She sat out in primer from the previous owner when he sent it out for some body shop work. And they removed all the hardware for me in advance. So that saved me some time and headache there. And everything was packaged up nice and neat. But the problem is the body shop went bankrupt. And they kept the truck for over a year, and he had to work with his lawyer to get it out. So it sat out in the yard, setting a primer. So I got a fair bit of just surface rust that has to be ground out here. I'm not too worried about that overall. Otherwise, she's looking pretty sharp, as they say. Uh, too dark in there to shoot. But hopefully you get the sense of the whole thing. Let me see if I can get back here. Give you a full-on shot and I don't kill myself in the process. Well, there you go, boys. I guess uh, the next thing, uh, the next clip will be about the uh, Highway Patrol surveillance system that's going in there. Picked that up for 75 bucks on Flea Bay and uh, got it all wired up on the bench and she works just fine and dandy. I'll clue you into that one in the next installment. Thanks for watching so far, guys. Appreciate the time.